Hello there guys, Biloba10000 here, bringing you another video game review. Today, we're taking a look at Rive, an arcade FPS developed by Mission Control Studios, exclusively developed for the Nintendo Switch. Set in an alternate 1970s Thailand, you have to run and gun your way through a horde of mutant worms hell-bent on causing chaos. Your goal is to stay alive for as long as you can against the wriggling menace, but the longer you last, the harder it gets. Three zones, two guns, one goal. Sur Review code provided by Mission Control Studios. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of Rife is extremely simple. You are an exterminator, a soldier tasked with wiping out the Worm Menace. You are given an E4300 Plasma Launcher and an L3 Phosphorus Caster, or in layman's terms, a handgun and a shotgun. And you must venture into one of three zones to contain the outbreak. You have the rundown streets of Chatuchak, the vibrant jungle ruins of Khao Yai Park, and the Site 17 factory where the infestation initially broke out. Each of the three levels has their own unique layout and strategies that will keep you alive. The rundown zone is a series of cramped streets, with multiple elevations, dark alleyways, and tons of potential places to be boxed in if you're not careful or aware of your surroundings. The jungle is, perhaps, the most beginner-friendly zone, as it's a wide-open area giving you more distance between yourself and the worms as you duck and dive along the ruins. The factory is, for me, the hardest zone of them all. It's a big hangar of sorts, though I stuck towards the raised platforms you spawn on, preferring to kite the worms around in circles. Though I'd often be unaware of my surroundings and find myself slipping off into the worm mosh pit below. Speaking of the worms, they come in three different variations. The most common is the giant Sago worm, basic enemies that are taken down with a few shots from your guns. But don't be fooled, they may go down easily, but they won't stop coming. Then you have the fuse worms, light blue in color, you'll know them when you see them. They spawn at a much lower rate, but have the added issue of being unstable and radioactive. When you destroy them, they explode, and it does a lot of damage both to you and your opponents. Invaluable if they're in the right spot, otherwise a sneaky explosive demise could be waiting for you. I found they spawned a lot more in the factory zone, which is partly why I find that level so tough, but I can't confirm if the spawn rates are higher or if I just got unlucky. The third and final enemy is the bullworm. Not that bullworm. That bullworm. These massive hulking creatures are tanky and faster than the player. However, they only spawn after hatching from a cocoon on the battlefield. These cocoons can spawn in one of two ways. One, at random, via a normal Sago worm deciding to cocoon themselves mid-battle, or two, after destroying a normal Sago worm, their corpse might morph into a cocoon. Leave them alone for too long, and a bullworm comes charging in. These cocoons can be destroyed before the bullworm spawns though, saving you from having to deal with them. And you'll want to destroy the cocoons because they are the only way to obtain health pickups. Good old cans of grub juice, which restore a single health point per swig. However, grub juice cans will stay spawned on the map for a limited amount of time before eventually despawning, so you can't hoard health cans to boost your score. Now, a little fun tangent story. I actually had issues with the health cans despawning because I had no way of knowing when they would despawn. I lost a run because I was moments away from grabbing a health can and then poof, it vanished. So, I let Mission Control Studios know since I wanted to provide feedback, not thinking much of it, and I was told in a response email that my feedback was not only taken into account, but that they would be adding a visual effect for health cans before they despawn. This is the first time feedback I've given has ever really contributed towards a game in that manner, so I'm glad it helped to improve the experience for future players, and it honestly made me so much more excited to review this game. You rock, Mission Control Studios. You rock. Tangent over, back to the action. 
When you spawn into one of the three zones, you're greeted with a timer on the top of the screen, five ovals on the bottom of the screen that represent your health, as well as three pink icons on either side of your health, which represent the levels of your weapons. Every time you kill a worm, you obtain crystals, which, after gaining enough, will upgrade your weapon's capabilities. For the plasma gun, you fire faster shots, while with the shotgun, you fire more shells. Be aware that these upgrades are run-based. The moment you die, you lose them. You're back to square one, start again, do not pass go, do not collect 200. You get the most crystals from bullworms, so perhaps letting a few of them spawn so you can kill them in the early game could net you upgrades a little bit faster. However, the crystals are worth collecting, as there is a crystal count for lifetime amount collected, which will unlock lore pages on the main menu as you play, which flesh out the reason behind the worm infestation. I'd love to see other mechanics tied to this count too, maybe cosmetic upgrades like different filters or different colorations for the worms, or maybe even new maps that can be unlocked by playing through the first three. Of course the lore reward is fine enough, I'm just spitballing here. So that's everything you need to know about how to play the game, but now, how does the game itself control? Well, my first run was with a medium controller sensitivity, the default, and it was just too slow for my taste. So, I turned my controller sensitivity up to the highest setting, so I had the snappiest responses to my movements, and it took some getting used to. I'm not the best FPS player, so I sometimes struggle at these little things called shooting and aiming which I am told are apparently, by my PR team, somewhat important towards the FPS genre. But after an hour or two of gameplay, I found my rhythm. It's like breaking in a new pair of trainers. They start off feeling a little uncomfortable, but once you adjust to them, it's like there was never an issue in the first place. My strategy for all three maps was to just hold the plasma gun button down for continuous fire, while blasting my shotgun anytime worms got too close. I like to hunker down in a small portion of the map I'm on to start, so I can get crystals and control any cocoon spawns close by for health purposes, and this works best in the jungle map where it's open air and there's lots of places to move and run to if need be. The city is more claustrophobic, I have my preferred starting spot, but I suspect I may need to start moving a bit more if I want to rack up a great score there, staying in one place only ever works for so long. Whereas the factory, I feel like I have great starts, but I get overwhelmed very quickly. Those fuse worms are run killers if you don't hit them at the right moment, and they got behind me a lot more than I care to admit. Now, you have two different performance modes the game can run on, aptly named Quality or Performance. Quality locks your frame rate at 30 FPS, but gives you a higher render resolution, while in Performance mode, your frame rate is 60 FPS with dynamic resolution. I preferred playing in performance mode for that buttery smooth gameplay, but you pick what works for you. I didn't notice any serious frame drops or quality issues aside from some textures taking a moment to load in after the level has already loaded up, nothing too crazy. The game also comes with three different filters, Modern, Retro, and CRT. Modern is the default. Retro is, as the name suggests, retro, pixel shading that gives the game that old-school art style that I can vividly recall from older consoles like the PS1 or the original Doom games. And then there's CRT, which uses the modern art style, but with a CRT monitor filter on top of it. I appreciate the inclusion, but I wouldn't play seriously with that filter. It gives the game a blurry texture that doesn't really do it for me. The novelty of it is fantastic, though. Each stage comes with its own music, composed by Vic Magic and Julia Bowie of the Music and Audio Discord, and they do a fabulous job creating intense tracks that you can jam to while slaughtering worms. I'm not a music expert, so I can't really say what about these tracks makes me love them so much, but my personal favorite theme was the jungle. It just kicks in straight away, and that opening beat drop was mwah, perfect for setting the mood. 
I look forward to seeing what new compositions accompany new zones down the line, as Mission Control Studios are planning on adding new maps to the game via free patches post-launch. Of course, this wouldn't be an arcade shooter without some leaderboards to see how good you are, and I was pleasantly surprised to see that I was, aside from Jody and Tom, the developers themselves, the current best in the world at the rundown and jungle maps. At least as of recording this footage. Admittedly, there's only 20 or so people on the leaderboard because the game hasn't released yet, but I'm taking the W where I can. Let me have this, guys. There was also the promise of friend leaderboards coming in the future, so if you and a group of friends want to see who the best Wraith player is, you can do that too. Lastly, I'd like to mention the museum. This option from the menu spawns you in a little museum hall and allows you to view various exhibits, such as the worm species in-game, your equipment, the history behind the outbreak, with each exhibit having a small portion of flavor text for you to digest. It's a cute way of showcasing the lore of the game, and I appreciated being able to hop in and read at my leisure. The way the museum implies the game's events are already in the past is a very nice touch too. There's also this lovely man who enjoys 3D movies, good on him. I also love the loading screens for this game. The little spinning worm icon is adorable, and you also get tips on how to play the game. Sometimes you get valid advice on how to deal with the worm invasion, but sometimes you get these little gems like, Tuk Tuk rides are terrifying and inexpensive, haggle for everything, or if you haven't in a while, remember to call your mama. Some of these tips are just general pieces of advice on how to survive a visit to Thailand, and I love it. The game doesn't take itself too seriously, there's a comical nature to a lot of the lore if you think too hard about it, like how you heal yourself with the very juice brand that ended up causing the outbreak in the first place. First class irony right there. And let me tell you what actually sold me on reviewing Rife. The developers were inspired to create this game after getting engaged in Thailand. A memorable life experience being memorialized through the slaughter of giant killer worms, which also happened to be a delicacy food in Southeast Asia, mind you. I don't think there's anything more romantic and relatable than that. A brilliant story behind a fun arcade shooter, you gotta love it. Overall, I think Rife is well worth your time. It's also incredibly affordable. Right now, you can purchase the game on the eShop for pre-order at £5.99, €6.74, or $7.49. These are 25% off prices though that will last until the 14th of January, with the game officially launching on the 15th, so purchase quickly. If you're seeing this video after launch, the current prices should be £7.99, €8.99, $9.99. It's not a game I normally would pick up and play, but I told myself this year I wasn't going to pass up opportunities, no matter how big or small they may seem. And I think choosing to try out Rife was an opportunity I won't regret anytime soon. And with the knowledge that this game is getting more content post-launch, I can't help but support this little indie title. Rife gets... 9 cans of grub juice out of 10. If you want to support Mission Control Studios, I will leave a link to their website down below, as well as a link to the official Rife trailer. Please give the trailer a watch, share it around, I think the game deserves some more recognition. If you're looking for games in a similar vein to Rife, may I suggest Devil Daggers for the PC, you can find it on Steam. It has the same overall gameplay loop, survive as long as you can against waves of tough opponents, except in that game, you only have one HP. It'll scratch that itch just fine. Thank you for watching, please leave a like if you enjoyed, consider following me on Twitter or Twitch, I stream four nights a week, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, guys.